Hi folks, today is Wednesday, May 20th, and a few updates for you. Um, I know many people are, you know, the, the state's opening up and the weather's getting nicer and we're itching to get out. Um, and we're going to talk about that um, end of this week or at the latest early next week in a memo and a video with some sort of phasing in of, of um, changes and guidelines. But before we do that, I want to just set some perspective. Uh, first of all, um, first step is the state has authorized, state of New Hampshire has authorized testing for all of our healthcare residents. So um, uh, skilled nursing residents, nursing residents, and assisted living residents. <clears throat> We've already done that once. The state is taking us through that a second time, which we think is fantastic. We've done that for Riverwoods Exeter. At the end of last week, uh, we've gotten all the results back and those folks are 100% negative. So that's fantastic news. Um, we expect to get the test kits for our Birch Hill residents by um, uh, today or tomorrow. And we'll do that testing promptly. And then we'll get results back in 48 to 72 hours. I will tell you that we expect from that testing that we'll have more folks who do turn up um, as positive cases for a few reasons. Um, we believe that that will be the case for a few reasons. One is that the virus is, it's in that health center. The spread is so incredibly easy. Um, we just expect that there will be. We also um, know that there are some folks who have some level of symptoms. The hard part with this virus is that the symptom set right now is so incredibly broad. So it could be Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, could be upper respiratory, wet cough, dry cough, productive cough, could be um, a headache, it could be a fever, it could be shortness of breath, it could be rash, it could be lethargy or, or uh, lack of appetite, which personally I don't have. Um, but so we're checking for symptoms uh, on everyone. Uh, we expect that when we do the testing, some folks will have um, test, test positive. What we've done so far, um, in all of our testing, we've, we've had no positive cases from Riverwoods Durham. We've had no positive cases from Riverwoods Exeter. We've had no positive cases on in the independent residents um, for Birch Hill. And we've had 20 positive cases from our healthcare center at Birch Hill. And of those 20 positive cases, we've had um, uh, seven people pass away. We've had 10 people who are recovered. Um, so that means either DPH has already cleared them or we expect that they will. They've been weeks with no change in symptoms. And we have three people who are um, still sort of an unknown um, in that process. So uh, that's where we are on our, on our healthcare side. Uh, we expect that with the testing that we'll do this week, we'll know more. And knowing is always better than not knowing. We've also tested our staff. So we've tested 100% of our staff um, back at the end of April. That was about 800 people. And then over the course of time from when this started through uh, today, we've tested 89 staff who have screened out of our process across all three campuses for anything that I described as the symptom set, sent them for testing. And of those 89 staff, 22 have tested positive. Those have all been Birch Hill employees. Um, and we've had 17 people who have had to quarantine for some reason. That might be uh, their exposure or a spouse or partner's exposure or a positive spouse or partner um, or um, some, some travel or just a whole, or it might be their own immunocompromised position. It's a whole variety of reasons. So as you can imagine, um, the virus is impacting us in a lot of ways. One is how we staff, um, on any given day, uh, staff will show up at any campus with some symptom, they'll screen out, we'll have them tested, um, and they're not back until we find out if they're um, negative. So it's, a, it's definitely a challenge in that regard. So that's where, that's where we are. Um, a little perspective on the state of New Hampshire. The state of New Hampshire, <clears throat> a month ago, so um, mid-April, um, we were doing about 1,000 tests a day. Now, we're doing, uh, on average, 2,000 tests a day. That's, that's great, because the more we know, the better we can act. Another bit of good news is that even as the um, number of tests that we're doing has nearly doubled in the course of that time frame, um, 
the number of positive cases over a 14-day average is not peaking. You know, it's not spiking, I, I should say. So we're staying fairly, um, fairly level. And you would think that as you test more people, the number of positive cases would go up dramatically um, per day. It isn't, so I think that's great. On the other hand, it's also not dropping dramatically, so that's less than great. So we're, um, we're holding our own for now. Um, and I think that's probably the product of the social distancing that was going on over the course of um, the month of April. So um, a risk that we, uh, the other thing I want to just mention too is that uh, Manchester is our hotspot in, in New Hampshire. So we have 454, 445 active cases in Manchester. Um, that is compared to about 170 in, in Derry, um, more than half of which are related to a nursing home that had 90 some odd cases, um, 162 in Nashua, 102 in Salem. Compare that to seven active cases in Exeter and zero active cases in Durham. So we're the product of really um, uh, beneficial geography for Riverwoods Exeter, really beneficial geography for um, Riverwoods Durham, and some unfortunate geography for Birch Hill. Um, you know, city, uh, highly densely populated, those are the challenges there. So Manchester is a hot spot. What I worry about is the seacoast communities um, are going to be in more risk as the summer comes, as the state opens up, beaches open, more people come, visitors come, less people are taking air travel right now. They come to the beach and we have more, uh, more people, more densely populated areas in our seacoast communities where, um, where two of our communities exist. So um, when I say we're super fortunate and grateful to have no positive cases in Exeter or Durham for now, uh, that's what I mean. We have to stay diligent. We have to stay... Um, as tight as possible. So we're, we're working really hard. The executive directors and I talk about this. We've had numerous conversations um, with uh, Linda, Deb, and Kim, and with Cindy Martin, our VP of Quality, around what risks are appropriate. We'll be back to you with some uh, phasing guidelines, either the end of this week or early next week, as we think about and talk about what we can do, what can be safe, um, and how we can balance your personal desires, the needs for our community, uh, the need to stay safe and healthy, um, and balance all of that with the goal of keeping all of us safe. So um, that's all for now. Uh, until we meet again, wash your hands, stay six feet apart, wear your mask, um, do everything you can to to have a good day, to have the best day you can um, within, within reason, um, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Love you.